Good evening and welcome to the Monday, March 18th meeting of the Curry Tuck County Board of Commissioners. At 6 p.m. we had a work session uh, going through our new proposed stormwater manual. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call on the Reverend David Anderson from Truth Alive Church to read us in the lead us in the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Could everyone please stand? Lord, you are great and wonderful, Lord. You're the creator of the heavens and the earth. You're the giver of all good things. We thank you for all that you've given us, Lord God. We thank you for this wonderful county that we live in, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, your love and your truth, Lord. And tonight we just pray that you lead this meeting, Lord. Pray that you bless these commissioners, Lord, as they've given up their times, Lord God, to come and serve this county, Lord. Just pray that you bless them in their lives, Lord. And pray that all the agenda that comes across tonight, all the decisions made, will be led by you, Lord. Let these commissioners be led by you and your truth as they lead this county, Lord. We give it all over to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, David. Uh, approval of the agenda, we have two, one item, Gwen has asked that we pull the resolution on the Mid-County Bridge. Is, it is not uh, prepared tonight. And then we have a resolution for the board to go in opposition to disposing of the waste from fracking in eastern North Carolina that is generated in the western part of the state. However, the resolution says that we are, at the bottom it says, we are opposed to fracking until North Carolina uh, changes some of the laws um, concerning the disposal of the fracking waste. Um, it should read that Curry Tuck County is opposed to the fracking waste being disposed of in Curry Tuck County in eastern North Carolina, not for us to go on opposition to the fracking uh, policy that's being debated. So if everyone will agree to those changes, we need an approval of the agenda. Mr. So Chairman, moved. Mr. Chairman, you also have the applicant for the one old business item has requested that item be removed also. Okay, item A under old business, consideration and action of balance of states has been, is removed from the agenda for tonight. Do we have a res um, motion in support of the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Uh, the first item after that is public comment. We have Ms. Doris Flora signed up. If you could please restate your name and address for the record. My name is Doris Flora. I live at 430 Caratoke Highway in Moyoc. Commissioners, good evening. I'm here to let you know that last Wednesday, March the 13th, I went to the Senior Center. <laughs> and when I walked up, they were walking on, working on the entranceway to the Senior Building. They had not quite completed it when I left that afternoon, but I looked at it, and it looked pretty good. I'm waiting for it to dry, and I am going to see it Wednesday when I go to play bridge again. Those of you that I talked to starting a year ago, I want to acknowledge you for the help and the patience and everything. It did take us some time, but we finally got it formed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have Gary Barco. Good evening, Gary Barco. I live at Shawboro, 656 Shawboro Road. Uh, I'm here to ask y'all, uh, the legislator has got a bill, Bill 224, uh, to allow hunting on Sundays. And as the Elmore Houndsman Association, and I'm representing most of them and the 
the hunters on the 13 regionals. Uh, we oppose to that, and we would like for y'all to also oppose. And y'all have uh, some paperwork in front of you that we were letters we wrote, and the ones that put the bill in place. Um, Senator Buck New Newton, Nash and Wilson County, Jim Davis, Graham and Haywood County, and one more. Ben Clark, um, Cumberland County, and uh, we would sure like to, to oppose this if y'all would help us out. Thank you, Mr. Barco. We have that on our agenda for tonight. Uh, next, we have anyone that no one else has signed up but we do have an old head back here tonight who welcome back mr petrie thank you it's good to see you sitting there again and uh to know if you'd like to say anything i was going to save it for commissioner's comments but i'll say tonight if you don't already know it you're lucky to live in curry tuck county um i'll try to get through this without losing it but the cars and the letters and the meals and the fruit baskets and it's just um, overwhelming and humbling to live in Curry Tuck and have people care about you. And uh, I will close by saying a, a wise lady told me one time, and she's here tonight, uh, the devil didn't want me and God's not ready for me. <laughs> so uh, it's good to be back. It's good to be setting up. And I'd just like to thank everybody at Curry Tuck for their outreach and, and concern and everything during my time. And I'm glad to be, to be setting up. Glad to have you back. Well, I would like to say, I know uh, Mr. Petrie, when I was out going through my ordeal, he, each and every meeting was uh, expressing his thoughts and concerns, so I certainly want to ditto that back to him, and it's good to have him back. He's my friend, and I love him. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that's all I have signed up for public comment. Does any other commissioners have anything, or is there anyone in the audience that did not sign up, would like to address the board. Hearing none, I'm going to close the public comment and move to administrative reports. We have Dr. Candy Dietemeyer, president of COA, to present the annual report from College of the Albemarle. And I think she's brought some of her staff with her that she may want to introduce. Good evening. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Um, I, I truly am excited to be here and give you our annual report. And at the end, I'm sure you'll probably uh, be more ecstatic than I. I'm going to talk a little bit about our new campus. Um, but I did bring a few folks with me tonight. And uh, so a, a point of privilege, if I can, just to introduce them. First of all, um, our chairman of our board of trustees and his wife are here, Fletcher Willie and Linda are here. Um, and, of course, two of my um, Board of Trustees members are on your commissioning board, one a commissioning appointment, and of course, Paul O'Neill, um, our governor appointee. So I have three trustees to tonight. They do count, I guess. Um, also, I brought uh, two of our vice presidents, Suzanne Rohrbaugh, is over our workforce development and continuing education. Stephen War uh, Woodburn is our VP of Student Success and Enrollment Management. And then Martha Johnson is here from our Dare County campus. She's an assistant dean there of her student success. And she has a student here. We have two students tonight, which I think is important. And you'll see why in just a couple minutes. So um, I think the, the chairman said I had an entourage with me tonight. I promise it's not an entourage, just um, a lot of good folks who like to travel about and make sure that as we're here, if you have questions. Um, and also to let you know, we believe that what we're doing in Curry Tuck is very important. So thank you again for having me. Um, I'm going to try to make this short, and it is under the 13 slides, I promise. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me make sure I got my directions down um, correctly. Um, so tonight I want to talk a little bit about College of the Albemarle and, of course, Currituck County and bring a little good news to you um, and remind you that COA is an exceptional institution, and I'm sure all of you know that by being on the ground. Um, we serve seven counties. Um, no other institution of, uh, in the community college system of the 58 serves seven counties. We are the only one. So we do consider that both a privilege and, on most days, a huge opportunity. But this previous year, uh, colleges are asked to meet certain performance measures. And of those 58, only 16 
uh, were able to achieve that. And so COA was one of those 16 exceptional institutions. So another good reason why the investment in our college right here in northeastern North, North Carolina is certainly um, a good place to put your investment. Um, I think Paul and Paul, and of course the, the chairman would say to you, um, we, we work hard every day, and one of the things I ask the faculty and staff to do is to strive toward excellence. Um, we could not have achieved that exceptional rating were it not for our exceptional faculty and staff. They wake up every day um, and come to work really working hard to make sure our students are well prepared, um, not only in skills training or in workforce development or in transfer, but just in life itself. And so I do want to give them a lot of credit. In everything we do, we say, how will this affect a student? And so uh, students are first in everything we do. So tonight, we're going to start with a couple of students because they really need to tell you what their experience is like at the college. And I have done this. This is six of seven county presentations. I wrapped them up in April. I asked the students to come. <coughs> I actually asked someone else to, to ask them to come so that I don't give them any comments to make. And I'm never disappointed. Um, I usually only take one student on the road, so to speak, but tonight um, we're going we're gonna to take a, about three or four minutes um, between the two and, and do two students. One is an international student um, who has been taking many of her courses in Dare County. She's a Curry Tuck County resident. And you can see there, um, she is uh, more than an overachiever. So I'm going to ask Yulia to come up and tell you a little bit about her experience. And then I think you'll be interested in, to meet David Young. Um, he, uh, a couple of years ago, went through some sheet metal training. And I'm going to let him tell you his, his story and about what he's hoping to do here shortly. So, Yulia? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yulia Vazhaeva. I'm a past year president of, a, of the Student Government Association and the current president of the International Club and the Literary Club at COA DARE campus. I'm here this evening to tell you a little bit of our club's events and projects. As community service clubs, um, throughout these two semesters, we have partnered with 22 community organizations to organize Thanksgiving food, food drives, uh, Thanksgiving dinners, food drives, and assist at local soup kitchens. We truly tried to be there where help was needed. Student Government Association assisted local businesses with hurricane arena cleanup and organized multiple on-campus Red Cross blood drives. Because our campus is so internationally diverse with over 20 languages spoken on campus, I feel compelled to mention the input of our international students. Last fall, our foreign students, including myself, um, shared their traditions by giving an interview to the local newspaper, Out of Banks Voice, and sp by speaking at the Rotary, Mentor Rotary Club. This February, we assisted Bethany United Methodist Church church at their fundraiser event, fundraiser dinner actually, uh, that earned over $8,000 for a local person in need of a kidney transplant. Our literary club members stayed busy as well as this last summer we worked on editing the second issue of a student written magazine about the history of the Outer Banks and I'm very proud to present you with the result of our work the second issue of the Sandbar magazine. Actually, I have some copies for you to take home and enjoy. <laughs> I understand that um, due to time limits, I will not be able to tell you of each and every event that we organized this year. Um, instead, I would like to use my remaining time to thank each of you for serving our community so faithfully. For COA and for me personally as because I'm a Currituck County resident, it means a lot um, that you helped us, and we really appreciate your help um, with building the fourth campus here at COA. For many COA students, including myself, this school is our route to success. Through hard work in classes, it has taught us how to be diligent students, and through leadership in various student clubs. It has taught us how to be good citizens. 
Thank you. Thank you. Well, as you can see from just some information on the screen about Yoya, she is um, a great student, and she's going to go on and do great things. And she's applying to some very top-notch schools, which I won't give away. But as soon as we know where she's going to go, uh, we'll get that information to uh, the commissioners so that they can share that. Because I think, given the uh, letters I've been asked to write into some of those colleges, I think you'll be very proud. Let me introduce to you very quickly um, David Young. And as David comes up... Um, he completed our basic aviation sheet metal course and some other continuing aviation classes um, over the course of the last couple years. So I'm going to let him tell you about that. And I think he's probably going to tell you about something he hopes he'll be doing in the fall. Hi, my name is David Young. I've been a resident of Curitac for 16 years. And in uh, 2008, I became unemployed. Um, three years ago, I uh, signed up for the aviation maintenance program at COA. I've taken the sheet metal one, sheet metal two, um, hydraulics, uh, pneumatics, and composites. And uh, the instructors um, with that program, they were all ex-military. They've also worked in the private sector. Uh, they were excellent instructors. They knew their field backwards and forwards, um, and they imparted that to the students. Um, in uh, August, uh, I hope to enroll in the uh, FAA uh, airframe power plant program that's going to start. And upon completion, I hope I'm able to get employment. Thank you. So let's talk about uh, where we've been before we talk about all that great landing of where we're going to be here shortly. Um, just very quickly, um, some enrollment numbers um, as they apply to Currituck County residents. The number um, in curriculum, 624 students of the, and, and the number you see in parentheses there would be the overall enrollment for that particular part of our enrollment. So of the almost 3,800 enrolled in curriculum. Um, basic skills and transitional studies are those students who are coming to us to either earn a GED or an adult high school diploma to finish that part of their, um, their workout. And we're really being a little bit more intentional there, uh, trying to transition those students, that's why you see a title change there, into a career pathway rather than just finishing a GED or your adult high school. We are pathwaying those students into a curriculum program so that they can obtain either a job certification or um, transfer into a field uh, to go into a four-year degree. So a little bit more intention um, in terms of those students finishing up. Workforce development and continuing education could be across the board, as you know, um, and so almost 400 students there. And then our high school students, that number, that 199, does include the 180 students that are currently enrolled in the early college at J.P. Knapp. JP NAP students, there are a number of them that are traveling to the Elizabeth City campus to take some of the high-end math and science courses, and we are coordinating that um, through a transfer program with the high school. Just some quick numbers um, on the aviation course numbers that we've been able to look at up through March, um, and we can, I'll leave this PowerPoint presentation with Gwen so you guys can go over the numbers if you have some questions. <clears throat> Those are the main four areas that he has taught in aviation. And a small business center, of course, also reaches out to Currituck. Um, and about 15 courses over the past year with 157 participants from your area. And many of the course topics are, are listed there. Uh, many of our students cannot come to the college and matriculate um, if they are not uh, receiving some kind of federal financial aid or scholarship. Um, and so of the students coming from Currituck County, there were 149 individuals of that enrollment number that you saw earlier who received financial aid, 213 uh, financial awards. So many of those students are receiving multiple awards throughout an academic year <coughs> to finish um, for a total of almost a half a million dollars going to students right here in Currituck County um, to finish their, their degree at the college. So we can't do what we do without your support and your contribution, and you have done a lot for us over the years. And I want to make sure that you recognize that we know your participation as a government and as a county uh, financially over the years to the tune of $75,000 a year has been very voluntary to support the Elizabeth City Campus. And uh, certainly your $10 million investment, give or take, I'm looking at Dan, um, 
over the last year um, has made a significant difference to the college. And thank you truly is not enough, not for the annual contribution you've made for the many years, but certainly in the investment that you have given us and that you've entrusted with us. And we do think that you've entrusted a lot to us. And we have worked very hard to make sure, and we will continue to, to make sure that that is uh, well taken care of. So if you will recall, as we finish up, this is where we were March 8, 2012. There was not a banner behind us. This is superimposed. You know how they say. <laughs> Dan saw this picture and said, wow, how'd that happen? Um, but how many of you remember this day? It was muddy. It was rainy. It was, uh, but it was great. There was 100 of us plus. Um, and so we, we thought we'd be 12 months, and we almost hit the target. So we've had a great team, both um, through the county and the designer and the builder and folks at COA. So we are, as of today, we've been moving stuff in, and uh, we're still working on that occupancy date, I know, but uh, we're getting very close. And for those of you who have not been out, this photo right here was taken, um, I'm looking for Eric, um, weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago. It looks even more complete today. So thank you again is not enough. That is our future. We have lots of great things happening at the college. Before you, um, you have some materials just a little bit more in depth about the enrollment numbers you have before you. Um, and a quick brochure that we've been using throughout our community presentations. Many of you probably saw those in the paper. We have been everywhere talking about the new campus and the opportunities. And so again, thank you. Um, I'll answer any questions, Mr. Chairman, if you have them. Otherwise, I thank you for this, this time. Let the others go first. Go ahead. I'd like to say thank you for choosing us because I think this was a mutual agreement if if my memory serves me right so thank you for cho you know choosing us you're welcome it really is a privilege anyone else I need to Yes. Dr. Niedermeyer, um, I have a quick question for you, and this was brought to my attention, but have you all come up with an emblem or anything for shirts or anything for the Aviation Center? Um, if not, our high school art department would love to take the opportunity to, to do some design, if that would um, um, be an opportunity for us to talk about. But it was just brought to my attention, and I thought that that would be a great opportunity you know, be. to give um, our high school students a, a kind of a bridge into the college. Yeah. I know that when uh, the program was originally started under the Workforce Development Con Ed kind of umbrella, um, the director of aviation, Elton Stone, used wings over Albemarle for some time. We asked as this was progressing to kind of back off of that for a while until we knew what we were going to do. We have not made that decision. Uh, we thought we would wait until we were open, so we can certainly talk about that. Um, if you want to put somebody in touch with me, I'll get them in touch with our marketing folks, and maybe we can make it a collaborative Perfect. process. Perfect. Just, just but give sure. the um, high school you know, students an opportunity to you sure. know, put something on their resume and, and give them a challenge. Absolutely. Thank we could, you. We, we do those things all the time. E even if it doesn't become the final product, they can certainly use it as an opportunity for them. Sure. Right. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Paul. Yes, sir. Hi, Candy. Hi, Vy. Just a question. I know you don't have a crystal ball, but in what you're hearing. Well, I really do, but they don't let me tell well, you. Well, they don't let you use it. Decent. Just from what you're seeing, I've I seen the enrollment that, that, that you had now. I assume right. that's still all over at Elizabeth City Campus. Hmm. What are you all projecting for here in Curry the enrollment? We don't know. Don't know. Um, Dan okay. has been after me for those numbers. No, I'm going to say that. Um, we really don't know because, and, and primarily, I know you're looking at it from the aviation. What is the aviation number? You know, Elton continues to tell me he hopes he's going to have a full class of 24 to get us started. Um, everything, and I, I did fail to mention this, so if I, I can, I'll, I'll ask the chairman. Um, there were many things I kept telling the trustees as well as um, your county manager and whoever I could get to listen to me. There was a lot of pieces that needed to come together. Um, SACS has signed off on the site. That's our accrediting agency, which was important. Mm -hmm. um, Department of Ed needed to recognize that SACS said it was okay and be able for us to be able to pay financial aid for those programs for students who are actually going to be in the facility. They've done that mm -hmm. um, probably about three months earlier than I thought they would. Um, I don't consider that a magic uh, or a crystal ball. We, I attribute that to other things, but... Um, and so there were a number of pieces that needed to happen. The one piece left is FAA to come in, look at the physical facility, look at all the equipment, which is still arriving, and then give us the okay to start the program. So without that, August can't happen. But we're everything else is in motion. Everything else is kind of we've checked the box on. So assuming all that goes well, they're out there meeting uh, students and potential residents and, and 
from all over the region, someone like David who's kind of been waiting in the wings. So we're hoping we'll have a full class for aviation. That, that number is 24 based on what, the lab, what he can do with the labs. Um, but we're also, remember, moving two programs, <coughs> machining and architecture. We want to make sure that those are full, right. um, hoping that the move doesn't impact that. We hope that that will actually help the water rise, so to speak. And then we're starting mechanical engineering. So as we've been focusing on getting aviation, we hope we're not losing or keeping our we're keeping our eye on those other students who may not be interested in the in the OS three but mechanical engineering. So we're hopeful we're going to have a full house, um, but it's like most other things. Until I know we're good with FAA and the doors are open, and students actually sign up and sit in those seats. So we'll keep you posted. Um, that's our goal. We can take sixteen in machining, and I think we can take sixteen architecture, and. Um, I'm not sure I'm mechanical. I asked that the other day, and the number's not coming to my mind. So I, I just recall when we were mm-hmm. debating this thing and negotiating and talking about it early on, that that was one of the big questions, especially for me, is, right. you know, aviation is great, but what else can we expect, and where else are we going to go in the future? And And, right. and so, yeah, I was just looking at a, a total picture yeah. of everything. Now, remember, that'll be just fall numbers, you know, or first year, and most of those programs are a two-year program. So once we get to the next spring, you'll have either a new class if that's a secondary. Pr- right. So it'll keep rolling. So we'll what keep those the, numbers coming. What is the capacity coming. once we get to that point to where, I mean, overall school capacity? Do, do we have a number? Is there a number? On- there would be, and I could I could get that to you. I, I wouldn't want to quote that today in, in the meeting, but I can get that to you and tell you. Because okay. we, we have that in the SACS information we had to propose. So I can get that, I'd like get to, that, that to you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Now, we're just talking curriculum, and I know Suzanne's probably – I can feel it at the back of my head because that doesn't count for anything that she would be doing in or they would be doing in workforce development or con ed so or the small business center if we were to put something at that site Mm -hmm. so anything that we would do aviation wise that would not be curriculum um, or any other training around welding or sheet metal all of that will count right for that particular location in terms of enrollment just as you see it in here you'll when i do the report next year as you already see, there's a curry tuck. It'll all be in there. That, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. Thank absolutely. You. Anyone else? Last question is a date for the ribbon cutting. <laughs> I know you didn't want to answer that. <laughs> so you were going to ask I that. asked it anyway. I know. Um, I'm working on it. We have had two conversations. You're going to help me out here, right? We've had two com- We've had two conversations or one? Two conversations, I think. Um, we came up with some tentative dates. You asked me to check with a particular person to see if that calendar would be open. Um, I made that call last week to try to get to the right person and then sent the email today before I left. Um, I have been in touch with Senator Hagan's office and know a tentative date that she might be available. So I wanted to wait for that person that we talked about. Which is More the governor? More excited about the other particular person than I am, I know. Senator Hagan. I know. I, I have that ask out, not to that office, but to a person who can get us there. Since there's been a change of leadership, so. Well, I mean. But we have we have talked about a late date in June, two late dates in June, and that if not, we would skip July and and try to hit August. So our goal is the end of June. I think it's important if we can get the. the you said is the governor. Right. I think it's important if we can get the governor into Curry Tuck County to do a ribbon cutting Absolutely. for a facility such as this that the, r- relies on state funding. And we want to make sure that our governor gets past 95 and Absolutely. comes out this way. Mm-hmm. And so, right. The system office actually has a new legislative liaison. We lost our, um, the person to the UNC system at the end of last legislative season. So Mary Shooping has now come over. And so I utilized her. We were on a conference call last week um, because I, with the change of leadership, many of us let's just be flexible with our date is what I'm saying. We are. We've we identified want him here two on a Friday afternoon when the traffic is bumper to bumper, <laughs> and then we want to send him down to the Outer Banks yes, for the sir. weekend. I heard that when you slipped me the <laughs> note at the meeting, <laughs> right? Um, and I have talked to your county manager, and we have identified two dates in June that we're working towards. And I don't, I can tell you what those are, but if as soon as I do that, if it doesn't work out, then you all are going to have to scratch it out. So we're working on it, um, and I'm hopeful. But um, if I don't hear from her by the end of the week i will do we'll we'll circle back thank you anything else i would just like to say i would suggest we fly the governor into our airport and then let him see 168 and 158 and 158 and the backlog i think that would make a big impression (laughs) you gonna follow you gonna be the pilot we'll find a pilot (laughs) 
I was going to say, if you were, don't count me in on that flight. <laughs> Dr. Dietermeyer, we thank you for your time and your efforts in Curry Tuck County and for our students in Curry Tuck County. Um, I have a child that goes to COA, so I know how She's important COA is to our community, and, and I just thank you and your staff. And thank you. You're welcome to come back anytime. Thank you, and thank you again for the privilege of working on the fourth campus. It's beautiful if you haven't been out there. It's magnificent, so thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I can, yes. we, 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 we talked about a facility. It'd be, it'd give me a brief and I'll like, update you. The b building, for all intent and purposes, is finished. Uh, we are going through the, the building inspectors are doing their final inspections this week. Uh, the final punch list has been created, so we're, we're finishing the building. Uh, it'll take COA, uh, their staff, 30 to 60 days to move the furniture and equipment and get that installed in the building. Uh, we'd like to look at the ribbon cutting when we have some activity around the building. Uh, we've also had some uh, assistance from the state it has provided some funding for some of the things we've done out there. So we'd like to maximize our opportunity to be able to get some of our representatives involved in a ribbon cutting. Uh, we're looking at when we when we think the General Assembly will be adjourned to increase our opportunity of being able to actually have them attend. So uh, that's where we're trying to look at the flexibility of, of the dates. We're kind of thinking uh, towards mid to late June. Uh, hopefully General Assembly is out and we'll be able to invite not only the governor but some of the other uh, uh, heads of the General Assembly that, that provided some funding towards the facility. So, yes. uh, But the building itself is, for construction purposes, is, is basically done. Uh, we are gearing up now to equip it and, and get it in a position to where it can operate. Thank you. All right. Next item is the consent agenda. However, before we approve the consent agenda, I'd like to ask that we remove item four in the consent agenda surplus resolution for finance and address that at the next meeting. So I guess I would ask for a, a approval minus item so four. Moved. Second. I have a motion, a second. Any further discussion? Um, Mr. Barco and the Albemarle Houndsman, you told him we had something on the agenda, on the resolution. Yeah, it's on the consent agenda. Well, it's not listed. To be added. It's to be added. In the motion that he made, it was to be added at that time. Okay. Okay. Resolution on the, the fracking. Sunday hunting. And then the resolution on the Sunday hunting, and then a hunting, and then a resolution on the wind energy is what we added to okay. the consent agenda. And I'll make a motion to approve as you just read. And I second and that. Minus item four. Correct. Yes. Yes. We have a motion, a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we'll go with Commissioner's report. Uh, Mr. McCord, you want to go first tonight? I don't have anything to report at this time. Mr. Griggs? Nor do I. Mr. Martin? Uh, I would only like to say uh, Senate Bill 58 is impacting everybody who owns a uh, boat in North Carolina. Uh, if you go to the North Carolina website, uh, you can, uh, North Carolina government, uh, it's in the Senate, and what it's going to do is about triple the registration fee for uh, boats and those stickers that we're paying, I think fifteen dollars for was, could be forty-five dollars. So, if uh, you're a boat owner in North Carolina, you ought to be aware of this because uh, this is another user tax that's being added, uh, you know, by our government. So uh, you really need to be aware of it. And I would suggest that uh, uh, you email uh, our elected officials. Uh, Representative Steinberg and uh, Senator Cook, and let them know that uh, you know you may not support that because uh, I have already done so. What are they proposing to do with the additional revenue? Uh, as I uh, I spoke to Senator or uh, to uh, Representative uh, Steinberg, and he told me it was uh, to be used to provide dredging for uh, our coastal inlets, which has always been a uh, Federal, federal uh, monies that have been used for dredging, and I suggested doing that. Why not just add a tax on uh, people who buy seafood? But uh, I'm, uh, you know, I, I think it's unfair. People who uh, live in uh, 
Raleigh and in the mountains, uh, they're going to be hit if they own boats, the same as people on the coast. So uh, it's something everybody needs to be aware of. I wish I had thought about it, but uh, uh, I think uh, Mr. Barco and his uh, resolution here, it made me uh, think, uh, but uh, please go to the uh, North Carolina government website and look on it, and it's Senate Bill 58. Well, it's not too late in the meeting for you to ask the county to uh, go make on a resolution in opposition to it. Well, I would make that. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 There you go. Thank you, sir. Anything else? No, that's got me. Mr. Idlett? Uh, I sent out an email to everyone this afternoon. There's a couple of different functions that are coming up. One is a community day uh, that's being sponsored by the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. <clears throat> they do it every year. Uh, the morning there'll be a session where you uh, in the morning there'll be a session uh, to where they'll have either uh, Mr. Berger or Mr. Tillis or someone there to speak and then in the afternoons gives you the opportunity to go and visit with your legislative people that are in Raleigh. The second piece is a uh, uh, a district meeting that's going to be held in Passapatank at COA. Dan's got the dates and I sent it to all of y'all and uh, I, I suspect we, we probably need to figure out who's going to go, who wants to go, and so we can – I know they were asking for reservations, so the one in, The one in Raleigh's on the 22nd of May. Yeah, I, I was just looking for it. I couldn't find it. But. And then the district meeting is – When did you say that, wasn't it? April 25th, I believe, yeah. is the one that is, is here. Yeah. It's actually okay. on the COI campus. Okay, I'm on this low-speed Internet <laughs> up here, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wednesday. April April 25th at Pasqua, uh, College of the Albemarle. And the annual County Assembly Day is on Wednesday, May the 22nd. starts at 9 a.m. It'll be lunch. Uh, and then arrange meetings with your legislative folks. And uh, then afterwards, there'll be an annual reception to honor members of the General Assembly. that will start at 5.30 in the evening. And registration is $95. It include lunch and the evening reception. Okay. So, Anyhow, it's Thank fast. You. Mr. Patrick? Uh, yeah, along with what Mrs. Flora talked about at the Senior Center, um, with the improvement we did to the curb, I think there's a dip there, but there's a certain area that's better suited for, for I guess, getting over the curb. Uh, can we make it a point, once that's completed, to mark it with some yellow paint or whatever or yes, so, so it stands out? So people can find their way. Please. That's all I have. <coughs> Ms. Gilbert. A um, couple things. The small area plan, the Mayock small area plan met, and the um, exercise that the planning department brought to the board was on mapping. And they had some very interesting statistics on ages, um, or medians on ages, salaries, um, um, both in the district um, that they are doing the small area plan on and also throughout the county and the state. Um, that was very enlightening for me. And if, if you're interested in that, um, you can contact Holly White with the planning department and she can provide those to you. Um, but <laughs> Ms. Laura is, is grinning because she was there and it was, it was some very interesting details. The second thing that I have, um, our chairman was talking about us needing to get in shape and, and, and move the desk out because we didn't have enough room back here on the bench. Um, but on April 13th, mark your calendars. It's going to be the first annual Groovin' for Food. It's a 5K dance walk. So it's 5K, which is 3.2 miles, and it's sponsored by the Mayock Women's um, and the Lower Currituck Food Pantry. So this is an opportunity for you to come out, exercise. Um, they've got a lot of activities going on. Um, it's going to be at Sound Park. So mark your calendars, April 13th. I know that the county has started their walking program, so and that ends up in May. So this is a great opportunity for us to start getting moving. <coughs> um, but it's um, the walk begins at no, any time between nine and, and twelve, um, and it's at your leisure. There's no race times or anything like that. So you know if you're not a, a runner or anything like that, you don't have to run. You can come out and just take a leisure walk. Um, but it is a five k on April thirteenth. Last thing I'd like to say is 
congratulations to Ben Woody, yeah. uh, who is a proud father again. I believe he has a little girl. She's a big little girl. Elizabeth. I, I thought it was at least. It's either Alice or Allison. We're trying to get clarified. Is it Elizabeth's middle name? Well, we've slaughtered her name, whatever. It's either Alice, it is. Alice Elizabeth or Allison Elizabeth. The, we, uh, the last name's Woody, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's healthy, and, and Mama's good, and everybody's happy. And then I, one thing, I, I do want to commend the school board. I saw where um, uh, they are considering to make space available in each of the schools for our deputies. To, so that there's a presence out there they can go to the schools and do some paperwork and, <coughs> and have a place to go and keep a presence a law enforcement presence on their our campuses so uh, I do know that they were looking into that so I commend them for that mr. county manager do you have anything nothing I thank you all right next item is uh, closed session to preserve attorney client mr. chairman information. I move to enter the closed session pursuant to uh, General Statutes 143-318.11A3 to consult with the county attorney and to preserve attorney-client confidentiality to receive advice from and give direction to the county attorney in the matters Etheridge versus Currituck County, Swain uh, Beach Corolla LLC versus Currituck County, and pursuant to General Statute 143-318.11A6 to discuss a personnel matter. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign.